It's Catholic Schools Week, which I think means it's a good time for an honest discussion of schooling educational options for Catholic parents. Where should you send your kids to school? Hello and welcome to Crisis Point. I'm Eric Sammons, your host and the editor-in-chief of Crisis Magazine. I just want to encourage people to like and subscribe to this channel, wherever you might watch it, wherever you may listen to it. We actually have a lot of good big name guests coming up in the, in the next month or so. I, I've, I've booked a number of people uh, that I think you'll enjoy uh, listening to and getting their perspective on different things. And so make sure you subscribe so that you will uh, see when those get posted and you'll be able to listen to them as soon as they come out. Also, I just want to let people know to follow us, follow Crisis Magazine on all the various social media sites that you might be on. Uh, we, we've recently realized that Facebook is shadow banning us. Uh, what that means is basically they allow us still to post content, but they often hide it from most of their most of the people who follow us. We have about 30,000 followers on our Facebook page, but very few actually see what we're what we uh, post. And so I just encourage people uh, to also follow us on other social media outlets uh, such as Gab or MeWe or Gitter, <clears throat> Parlor, Float, whatever the case may be. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook for the time being. Hopefully we'll stay on there for, for a bit longer. Uh, so just follow us on all those. And in most places, we're at Crisis Mag. That's usually what our handle is at most of those places. Okay, so what I want to do then today is to talk about schooling. It's Catholic Schools Week. Uh, uh, this is, uh, what's today? Today's February 1st, 2022. And Every year about this time, there's an effort to have Catholic Schools Week to talk about Catholic schools and how great they are and how all Catholics should send their kids there. I want to have a little more frank discussion, though. I want to have a little more of a, of a discussion of exactly what Catholics should consider when they're uh, deciding on schooling educational options for their kids. And I want to look at public schools. I want to look at Catholic schools. I want to look at homeschooling. Now, I know there are other options out there. There are some private schools that are non-Catholic. There are boarding schools. There are charter schools. Lots of different options like that. However, they're all very specific and individualistic and distinctive. And so it's hard to paint too broad a brush with those different options. So we're going to talk about the big three, which is the, which is the choice for most parents, which is public schooling or uh, Catholic schools or homeschools. So the first thing I want to talk about is public schools, and I want to begin the discussion of public schools with a quote by somebody who's not a, not a Catholic, he's not a saint, not even a Catholic, uh, and that's Malcolm X. And he said, only a fool would let his enemy teach his children. Only a fool would let his enemy teach his children. I think that's an important quote. I, I think there's a lot of wisdom behind that uh, for us as Catholics today when we are considering sending our kids to Public schools, because remember, what are public schools? They're government schools. They're schools that are run by, supported by the government. And therefore, if you think the government is your friend, then sure, what's wrong with public schools? However, I think most Catholics today realize, at least faithful Catholics, practicing Catholics realize, the government is not your friend. In fact, the government is becoming more and more your enemy. I would say it is your enemy. And I think it's becoming more and more the case that the government is, is our enemy. Uh, they're against us in so many different ways. So why would we send our kids to be educated by them? It just makes no sense. It would be like uh, during the Cold War, an American sending their kids to Soviet Union schools or the other way around, frankly. And, and so you would never do that. Now, I know that the objection is, well, the, some public schools aren't so bad. Some a lot of teachers are, 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 are good teachers, things like that. I mean, I get that. My dad was actually the superintendent of a public school district uh, for a long time. I went to public schools all through uh, college, throughout college. Uh, it wasn't until I got my master's degree that I actually went to a non-public school. In fact, it's kind of funny. My first day at Franciscan University of Steubenville as a grad student, I had gone to public university, public schools all before that. We started our first class, my first day there, and, and the professor starts with prayer, and I actually was shocked. I, did, I didn't realize that you, you said a prayer at the beginning of each class. That's how pagan, I guess, I was at that point. But anyway, so uh, but, but public schools. So I get that there are those some public schools, school teachers that aren't not directly your enemy, but they work for the enemy. They work for a system that is attacking our faith as going against Catholicism. So why would you want them to educate your children? 
even the, the, the quote unquote good teachers who are maybe sincere and good natured, they still are part of the system and have to teach us part of that system. They can't go outside the lines very much. And those lines are becoming more and more directed against Catholicism. And so even a good, quote unquote, good public school teacher is still going to be problematic for, for educating your kids. The most important thing, I mean, these are people forming your kids for a lifetime, how they're going to end up. And I think we know so many stories of kids from good families who went to public schools and then they fell away later. And, and I think that's just it's, it's very tragic. I think a lot of it hit parents kind of blindsided parents because it's not like public schools 50 maybe more like 80 years ago were terrible necessarily but they weren't but, but they weren't like they are today and they, they gradually became worse and worse they weren't that great in my day when i went to high school in the 80s uh they, they weren't that great but i think they're far worse now and of course we have the situation now with, with all the craziness going on with covid where senior kids in public schools is a really i mean it's not just that they might learn some things that are bad, they might be physically, uh, not physically, I shouldn't use that word. They might be mentally and psychologically abused. And we have, for example, uh, here's one headline I just saw recently. Schools in 14 states now require students to get COVID shots. And so a handful of states have barred schools from requiring the, the COVID vaccine, but 14 different states, the students are required to get a COVID shot in order to attend the public school. That's obviously a problem. There's a lot of schools. In fact, most schools are still mandating masking. That's still a big controversy. A lot of public schools are mandating masking. And I'm sorry, but if you're forcing a kid to wear a mask all day, it, it, it's child abuse, pure and simple. There, there's nothing that has shown that wearing these cloth masks all day does anything to prevent the spread of COVID. Plus, children are not in danger, uh, any serious danger from COVID. Yet we're forcing them to wear masks. The developmental disabilities we're giving to these kids is just, a, it's criminal, frankly. I also think, though, that there, there's another issue that the public schools are really all in with the woke agenda. And a good example is I'm going to, I'm going to play this clip. You can listen to it if you're listening, but also it's a video. And, and it, it's from the Chicago Public Schools. And so this is a video they recently posted uh, on their website, the Chicago Public Schools. And I'll just play it and you can see for yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Cami Pratt, the district's chief Title IX officer. And I'm Deb Spragans, the district's deputy chief Title IX officer. The new school year is off to a strong start as we've welcomed our students back to our school buildings five days each week. On top of ensuring that each of our schools is a safe learning environment, we're also taking steps to create more inclusive and supportive schools. One change that will be implemented this school year relates to our school bathrooms. In compliance with new federal guidelines, all CPS students and staff will have fair and equitable access to bathroom facilities that align with their gender identity. We will be providing all schools with updated signage that makes our bathrooms more inclusive. It will identify the fixtures available in each restroom and make it clear that all restrooms are open for use by anyone who feels comfortable. Staff will continue to have staff-only restrooms available to them. This is an incredibly important step to increase gender equity for all, which is why we will be requiring all schools to post this signage by December 1st of this school year. Our district's Office of Student Protections in Title IX is also working on a long-term plan to create more permanent signage for our bathrooms. I encourage you to visit our website at cps.edu forward slash OSP to learn more about our comprehensive approach to creating more inclusive, equitable, and safe schools. If you have any questions, you can email us at OSP at cps.edu. We look forward to having a safe and successful school year at every school in every neighborhood across Chicago. Thank you. I mean, I think there's only one way you can, only one word that you can use to describe that. That's evil. It's evil. I mean, my goodness, they're talking about allowing anybody into any bathroom in these schools. And so I mean, well, this is just insane. And we know about this. We hear about this, but this is real. And in fact, if you notice what the Chicago public school said is they're doing this following federal guidelines. So this is not just something in Chicago, but there's a push to make this the case in every public school in America 
where basically Johnny and Jane can go to the bathroom together. Because, of course, maybe Johnny declares that he's also Jane or something like that, some insanity like that. But this is what is infecting. It's not. And so there's a case where you're putting your kids in physical danger by sending them to public schools. If you send your kids to Chicago public schools, you are putting your kids in physical danger, as well as all the mental, psychological, and emotional and spiritual danger you're putting them in. Now, there's also other problems with schools, these public schools, for example, you have a lot of violence. You have a, a, like, for example, there's a, the TikTok challenge that was going around recently where kids were like uh, challenged to steal things or assault their teachers, things like that. I mean, it's just it's insanity. And I know not every public school is like that. I'm not saying the public school, for example, closest to me is like that. But I am saying that it's it's widespread. And so sending your kids to public schools is having your enemy teach your children. And ultimately, one thing we have to note is that government schools, they, they first and foremost, they teach compliance. That is the number one driving force behind government schools. In fact, that's the reason for their existence. It's why they were created in America, at least back in the 19th century, was in order to create good compliant drones for the workforce. And so by sending your kids to, to public schools, you are basically saying, I want to train my kids to be compliant with what the government thinks they should be compliant to, the narrative that the government is pushing. And so ultimately, the bottom line in my mind is that Catholics should not send their kids to public schools, period, end story. Now, I know there are situations where maybe that happens. But you should be doing everything you can to stop it. If it is happening because you can't help it because maybe you're a single parent, uh, you can't afford any Catholic schools, you can't afford to move, whatever the case may be, I get that. But at the same time, every Catholic who has a kid in, in, in public schools should be working to change that and get their kids out of public schools. Uh, there shouldn't be one Catholic left in the public schools, in, in my opinion. I just think that it, it's, it's clearly a case of having your enemy teach them and you're teaching them anti-Catholic behavior, anti-Catholic history, anti-Catholic uh, morality, everything. So don't send your kids to public schools. I think I think most people watching this probably already knew that. But I wanted to make it clear, like by showing that video and just talking about it, that it's not just the fact that they're that it's woke wokeness gone crazy with the, with the crazy bathrooms, but it's the fact that we're talking about a program that is made to brainwash your kids. And, and, and that's, we can't do that. Okay, now public schools. No, Catholic schools. What about Catholic schools? Now here, we're, we're, we're getting a little more controversial among Catholics. And we're talking about the you know Catholic Schools Week. And we see all the dioceses that are being, making a big push for how great their Catholic schools are. Now, one reality is that they don't necessarily want to talk about is that Catholic schools are in decline. COVID really hit them hard. Uh, because I think a lot of people were like, well, why should I pay all this money for my kid to sit at home and, and take your classes or why should I pay all this money? And, and they're going to have to go through all the rigmarole of, of vaccines, but especially masks as well. So I think uh, I, the, the fact is that I, I forgot to bring it over with me. I, I saw a stat where the, there was, a I think, a 6% enrollment drop from 2020, 2021 in Catholic schools. That's significant. That That's pretty big. Uh, for a one-year drop in, in attendance. And so enrollment. So that, that's that's one thing we should note. I also want to say, before I say anything else, there are some good Catholic schools. And I'm not, I don't want to act like there are not any good Catholic schools. I'm going to be very critical of Catholic schools, but there are some good Catholic schools. Uh, in fact, we're going to be featuring one of them at Crisis Magazine this week, and we, feature, we featured other ones in the past. And so I don't want to act like there are no good Catholic schools out there. However, I think we need to be very blunt. We need to be very... Uh, honest, we need to be very critical about the state of our Catholic schools. And again, I'm talking mostly in America here uh, because that's my experience. That's what I know. I can't speak about what the Catholic schools are like in Germany. I imagine they're worse, uh, but I, I can't say that for sure. Or even in Canada or somewhere like that, but I can talk about America. I'd be willing to bet that the Catholic situation is probably very similar in other Western countries because the Catholic Church situation is very similar in other Western countries. Uh, but here's the problem ultimately with Catholic schools is that most of them, they have bought into the, the dominant educational narrative that is promoted by the public schools, by the government schools. Many Catholic schools, they basically ape the, the government schools. They're just a few years behind. They, they, they do a lot of things. They, they believe the same things that, that 
the the government schools are, are are promoting. So often they become just public schools with a crucifix in them. One example is just uh, let me show this photo. This is from I, this took me no time at all to find, and I'll explain. I'll describe it for people who are just listening. This is promoting Catholic Schools Week. So this photo shows up, and it, what it shows is it shows a teacher with a mask wearing, showing something to a kid who looks very dis, a, a young boy disinterested with his mask on. Oh, let's blow his nose. And then two girls who have their two young school girl, children who have their eyes glued to screens with mask on and headphones on. Some diocese, and I won't name the diocese. I'm not trying to shame them. A diocese thought this was a good example of what Catholic schools are about today. They they literally put this up as a promotion for Catholic Schools Week. To me, this looks hideous. First of all, you're forcing kids to wear masks, and again, I could go into all that, but that's ridiculous. Oh, they also the the, the in the picture is a uh, a Purell for for washing their hand, clean their hands, I guess. But kids staring at screens with headphones on and mask on, how is that education? How is that somehow something I'm supposed to be encouraged by and think, oh, I want to send my kids there. My kids can wear masks and, and have headphones on and stare at screens at home. Why should I pay Catholic schools to do it? And this is an example, though, where they just don't get it. A lot of these, mostly the diocesan schools I'm talking about, not necessarily the ones that are, that are, that are lay led by, by parents or something. that Those are usually better. But they just don't get it. They think that's education, sticking your kid in front of a screen all day, may, forcing them to sit there, sit, especially young boys, to sit in, in, in classrooms for eight hours a day. They think that's good education. And so there's so much like the, like the public schools. Also, they're beholden to the, the rules and regulations and mandates and laws of, of the state. For exa Here's an example. In the Archdiocese of New York, they had a statement that they came out with last week where they said that currently there's a whole debate in, in – um, there's a legal battle going on in New York State about whether or not uh, kids can be forced to mask or not in schools. And it's been challenged. It's been overturned. But then it's come back. And basically the superintendent of schools for the Archdiocese of New York, he came out with a statement that said right now because of the law, we have to have a mask mandate. But as soon as the mask mandate is is lifted by by the courts, we will make it optional. So, I mean, that's good news that, that they're going to they're not like going to keep it because I know of places. In fact, I know of a place, uh, a diocese in Florida. I think people who know me know what diocese I'm talking about, where they still have a mask mandate, even though the state of Florida doesn't. So if you kids, send your kids to public schools there, you probably don't have your kids don't have to wear masks. But if you send them to Catholic schools, they do have to wear masks. But anyway, so in New York, Archdiocese of New York, he's saying we're going to lift it as soon as they allow us to. But I just want to note something. Literally the week before that notice went out, they sent out COVID guidelines. This is the Archdiocese of New York. It says, as required by Governor, how do you pronounce her name? Hockle, Hotchels, executive, executive order, so the governor of New York. Mask usage remains an effective way. Oh, my gosh. Mask usage remains an effective way to curb the spread of the virus. In particular, surgical masks, appropriate double masking, and KN95 and N95 masks are most effective. So here they're saying, literally the week before, we think masks are great. We think kids should be wearing these KN95 or N95 masks all day. And they're saying it's an effective way to curb the spread of the virus, which is just a false statement. It's factually, scientifically incorrect, yet our, the school that are telling, telling this is a fact. So... They're going along with the narrative just as much as, as anybody is. Excuse me. And so these Catholic schools, so many of the diocesan schools, they follow along with what the, the, uh, the, the public schools are doing, what the government schools are doing. And don't think there are infected with wokeness. There's a story on the Daily Signal the other day in which somebody's daughter had been basically saying that, <coughs> excuse me, saying that she was she was now a boy and they pulled her out of the schools and sent her to a Catholic school, hoping that would make things better. But the Catholic school basically endorsed the, the, the insanity of this young, poor girl saying that she was a boy. And this is in a Catholic school. Now, she didn't name the article in the Daily Signal. She didn't name what school what, what school district it was or where it was. But that's a Catholic school. So it's not like they are free from the, the effects of woke culture in these Catholic schools. 
they also buy into, like I said, they buy into the late, latest educational fads, usually a few years late. They very much are embracing the idea of kids sitting in a classroom all day long, medicating the boys if they can't sit still, sticking them in front of screens for a lot of that time, and giving the younger kids a lot of homework. And I just want to make it clear. Homework is stupid, especially for younger kids. If you can't educate them in eight hours in a day, why are you, send, why are you sending them home to do more work? That just shows you're not a very good teacher if you're, if you're forcing them to homework. I'm talking about the younger grades. I'm not talking about in high school necessarily where now you're going to be doing research projects and, and working on your own a lot more. I'm talking about in elementary school. I remember this. I Okay, I'll get to this more in a minute, but my, my oldest daughter... When she was, she went to uh, local Catholic school when she was in kindergarten, first grade. Then we pulled her out and we've been homeschooling ever since. That was 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago. And I remember thinking how stupid it was for her to have to be doing homework at, in kindergarten or first grade. Yet what happens is the Catholic schools, they, they, they brag about this. They brag about the fact that their kids are sent home to do homework as if that's a good thing because they're being very serious about their academics. No, it just means you're not doing a good job of your academics during the day. That's what it really means. But also they do a lot of, they push the technology. I remember I was actually on the board of the school. This was in 2005, I think. No, no, earlier than that, 2003, 2002, 2003. So it was 20 years ago. My daughter, like I said, she was in kindergarten and first grade there. And I was on the board of the school. And I remember how there was a big push to teach the kids things like Excel. It was, it was basically old people thinking kids had to be taught how to use Excel and Word and things like that. And I tried to tell them, I say, listen, these kids know how to do this without us telling them, without us teaching them in schools. It's part of their whole environment. It's, it's osmosis. Some, some uh, junior high kid isn't going to have to figure out how to use Excel. They're just going to know because they know how to use these different tools because the, it surrounds them everywhere. Yet they wanted to have an extra class where they taught that. And it's funny because I was the computer guy on the board. I was actually a computer programmer at the time. So they thought I would be all on board with, with pushing more and more technology into the faces of these kids. And I said, no, that's not education. That's harming them. They don't need that. They need to learn things like how to read, how to write, how to do arithmetic, how to read the classics, how to think. That's what they need to do. They don't need to ha be, have a screen set in front of them and give them technical training on Excel when they're eight years old. But often that is what happens at the Catholic schools because that's what's happening at the public schools. And in, or in a race to the bottom, really, but in a race to kind of keep up with them, that's why that, that's what they will do. And this is the case for a lot of diocesan schools. This is the case for just one or two. This is the case for a lot of diocesan schools, particularly around the country. Now, I want to make something clear. I don't have a problem with the the concept of Catholic schools. In fact, in some ways, a Catholic school is the ideal situation. If you have a group of people and they can bring in some good students and they have a strong spiritual background, uh, and, and I'm sorry, good teachers, strong spiritual background, i.e. most likely nuns, solid nuns, I think you can have a great situation for a lot of kids. I still don't think they should be sitting in, in the classroom all day. I think that's not at younger ages, especially for the young men. I don't think that's a good scenario. I think that's that's for later years. But I think you can have a good uh, Catholic school. That is a possibility. However, so many of them today are simply government schools with a crucifix in the classroom, and a bit they're a bit better academics and a little Catholic seasoning. I still remember when I my daughter, when my oldest daughter, when she went to University of Dallas, we went to a. Uh, uh, the president, when, when I dropped her off, I went to this uh, orientation session with the president. And the president has been fired, and he was terrible of uh, University of Dallas time. I can't remember his name. But he gave this talk about the, the impact of Catholicism on the school. And he basically said, it's like a soup, and it has a Catholic seasoning in it. And he thought this was a good thing that Catholic parents would like to hear. I was horrified by it. I'm like, it's only the seasoning? I want it to be the meat of the school. I don't want it just to be the seasoning. Yet that's exactly what it is in so many Catholic schools today is it's just the seasoning. It gives a little bit of a different flavor than it would have if it didn't have that seasoning. But fundamentally, what's in the soup, the meat that's in the soup is the same as the meat in the public schools. That's where the real problem is, is that too many Catholic schools, they just want to make the, the Catholicism the seasoning and not really the meat of what makes them a, a good and solid Catholic school. So what's the bottom line? I think there are some good Catholic schools. And if you have one around you, I think you should look into it. And you're very fortunate. 
However, I think they're few and far between. And usually they're not worth it. I didn't get in the point about how expensive they are, that, that Catholic schools are often very expensive and it forces parents or at least pressures them to be two income families, which is which is not good. And so what happens is, is that you're paying for something that's really just not worth it. So I think what we need to do is we need to be very honest as Catholics. We need very honest and very critical of our Catholic schools that are local. Don't be assumed that the one you send your kids to or the one in your area, oh, that's one of the exceptions. That's one of the ones that's not so bad. It probably is one of the ones that's that's pretty bad. So I really think you need to look critically at it and say, is this something that really is teaching my kids uh, the faith and helping them to grow in their faith? And are they really learning the faith also by like osmosis, by the environment of the school? Okay, now let's look at the last one, uh, the homeschooling option. As I already mentioned before, this is one we chose, so you know I'm going to be pro-homeschooling. But I really do think that, that homeschooling is the best option in most cases for Catholics today. I don't think this is true for all time or anything like that or in every situation. I do think, though, in America today, for most Catholic families, homeschooling is likely to be the best option. And I think a lot of families are finding this out because homeschooling is growing. Uh, even non-Catholics are obviously doing a lot. COVID has caused an acceleration of this. I saw another stat uh, where homeschooling has spiked after uh, COVID, which makes sense because they realize, wait a minute, our kids are at home and they're staring at screens and we're, and we're paying this or we're going to public school and going through all the hassle of that. Why not just educate them ourselves? We have to stay home with them anyway. So a lot of parents found out, hey, I really like this option. I like homeschooling. I think I'm going to go with that. Now, for us, the story of us deciding homeschool is interesting because when I was at, at Franciscan uh, University in the grad program, this is in the mid 90s before I'm married. And I remember I had a, I, I had to do a paper on the Vatican II document on education, which I am forgetting the name of it right now. Uh, well, I don't have it behind me. Anyway, I, 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 if I remember, the, I'll remember the name of it later. But anyway, I had to do a paper. And I did a paper on basically can Catholics uh, homeschool. And this is 1995, no, 1994, 95, something like that. And so homeschooling was still very fringe at that time. Only a few people did it. Most of the parents who did it were, were kind of wacky. And I say that, by the way, as a compliment. Uh, and, and so it wasn't really established like it is today or even was 10 years later when we started doing it. And I basically, my conclusion was that you should send your kids to Catholic schools if at all possible. And homeschooling really wasn't a great option. Now, fast forward to 10 years later when I'm actually a parent, I actually have kids who are going to a Catholic school. We sent our, my oldest daughter to the best Catholic school in, in the area. And it wasn't and good people there. Very good people. I love them. I, I'm, I'm close with a number of them still to this day. Uh, and I don't want to say anything against them as people because they were great Catholics. And that's why we sent them to this Catholic school. And in fact, we even liked the kindergarten teacher our daughter had. But the fact is, is that we were very we weren't happy with it for a couple of reasons. One is we'd find out that, for example, a lot of times if like it was raining and they couldn't go out to recess, they'd watch a, a video, like a Disney video, which we weren't letting our, kid, our, our kids watch. And they were watching a Disney video. And, and they just thought there's no big deal. Didn't need to ask permission. So we're like, oh, that's not good. And then one day we, I went in for a parent day where we could observe the class. And I remember distinctly that I, f I felt like the class was a study in management, of managing the kids. It wasn't teaching them, it was managing them. There was a couple kids in the class, boys, who were very rambunctious, probably because they just didn't like sitting around all day, who took a lot of the attention of the teacher. And there was also a couple kids who were very bright and, and, and really excelled who took a lot of attention to the teacher. And my daughter, who was bright but wasn't really an outgoing person, wasn't really uh, 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 one of these kids who was like, you know, uh, just super brilliant and just kind of stands out. I just felt like she just she would just sit there and, and got no attention paid to her by the teacher because she didn't get in trouble and she wasn't a bad student and she wasn't the, like the best student either. She just was a good student there. And I just had this image in my mind that came to me of her sitting, spending 13 years sitting in class, never really getting the attention of her teachers. And I thought, what am I paying for? Why am I doing this? I just thought there, there's no real reason to be doing this. And so we decided, my wife and I decided to pull her out and to start homeschooling. This was her second in second grade. I think it was 2004. She's graduated from college now. So I, I, whatever that would be. So 20 years ago or so. Now, a big reason at the time was because of academics. We didn't necessarily think that the spiritual life on the on, on, at the school was bad. We just thought that the academics were, were lacking. We didn't like certain things like the influence of 
just watching Disney movies. I mean, it happened more than a, a few times. That's what was annoying to us. A one-time thing, like, okay, whatever. It happened a lot. And so what we realized was we, we wanted to homeschool kids. And like I said, mostly for academics. And at first, excuse me, we just tried to transfer regular school, like the government school model, to home. We even had a little desk. I had a whiteboard and, 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 and my wife tried to teach him like that. And we soon realized that was, that was dumb. There was no reason to do that. What we really needed to do was educate our kids individually in the best way we thought for them that, that matched both their personalities and my wife's personality, who was the primary teacher. I taught them a few things. He, I teach them a few things here and there, religion at times, things like that. Um, but my wife is the primary teacher. She's the one who does most of the schooling of the kids. And so what would be the best setup for my wife and for the kids? And we, we started to do that. And we started to realize there are so many benefits to homeschooling beyond just the academics, which, like I said, was the reason we started doing it. We were able to, to spend much less time, first of all, on educating. And that was the that was the amazing thing, first of all, is that we realized we could cover what took eight hours in school to, to do in about a half hour to an hour early on in the early grades. As they got older, obviously, it took longer. But in kindergarten, you can you can educate, cover everything that your uh, local Catholic school or government school covers in about a half hour to an hour a day. And, and you're and they'll be ahead of those kids, frankly. But so it doesn't take that much time. So the kid has a lot more time for free time, which is great for them because they can they can do their own reading. They can do their own play outside. They can they can just be imaginative. They can be free. And that's a good thing. They're not learning to comply. In other words, they're learning to be free. They're learning to love the world around them and see things from different perspectives. It also allows a lot more time for other interests. You can go on any field trip you want. You can, if a kid is particularly interested in a certain topic, you can really explore that with them a lot more. Uh, you can really focus on the specific needs and interests of each child. Now I do want to say I'm a big boost for homeschooling, but I do want to say it's not without its challenges. And one of the challenges is, is actually that's actually true is socialization. Now, the, the knock against homeschooling about that you, the kids aren't socialized is a joke. I mean, it, it is ridiculous. I mean, I've met so many homeschool kids that are so better socialized. I mean, do I really want to send my kids to government schools to be socialized? I mean, that's like basically sending the jail to be socialized in a, as an adult. So, yeah, I'm not saying like that. What I'm saying, though, that a parent does have to look into these various uh, the needs, the social needs of their kids, make sure that they, they are met. And it's a challenge. Sometimes you, it's, it's hard to do depending on where you live. Fortunately, in a lot of, especially in the bigger cities, there's a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different uh, groups that form of homeschooling uh, families in which you're able to get all those needs met. Some areas are better than others. I know we've lived in a couple of different places, and I'll just say some of the areas were much better for that than others. Some, there, it was a struggle, and you can ask my kids. They'll tell you that, uh, and they, they won't be afraid to tell you that either. Also, another challenge is sometimes academic subjects, especially when they get to high school, can be challenging for parents. Maybe a parent's terrible at math. And by the time they get to, to high school, uh, the math is pretty advanced and it can be difficult for a parent to teach that to their kids. Now, the good news is, though, this isn't 1980 anymore. This isn't even 1995 anymore. It's 2022. There are so many resources, unbelievable number of resources for Catholic parents who want to homeschool. There are different programs, like, for example, for a number of years, we used Mother Divine Grace, and it had on, some online classes, for especially for the older kids. It has a lot of different uh, re ways that you can teach them. There's other programs. There, there, I think Mother Seton is another one. There's a lot of different programs. I don't want to uh, leave out any programs. There's plenty of good ones. Also, in a lot of locations, you have solid co-ops, where basically you send your kid to uh, some location, you'd probably go yourself, and they, they, they learn with some other kids with, a, with another parent, another homeschooling parent who might have an expertise. Maybe he's a, a scientist or something like that, uh, can teach them science or whatever the case may be. They can, they can hang out with some other their friends. Maybe that's maybe one or two days a week. That's another option. There's lots of different opportunities. It really is. There is really no excuse of I can't homeschool my kids because I don't know how to or something like that. Like I get that there might be a reason you can't because of economic reasons that, like I said, single parent, something like that might not be able to do it. But ultimately, you can homeschool your kids if you if you really want to, if you have uh, uh, the um, resources to do it in the sense of if you if you can uh, have one of your one of the parents who doesn't work, uh, which obviously should 
frankly be the goal for every Catholic family anyway, is that you, you, the, 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 I, would, I would argue that, that the mom should try to stay at home if, if she can at all anyway. And so I really do think that homeschooling is, it is the best option for their, your kids, Catholic kids, for Catholic, Catholic parents, actually all parents. Homeschooling is the best option. It's not always possible. I get that. And, and I feel for those parents who, who would love to homeschool, but they just can't because of, of some situation beyond their control. But I think if you can, you should. And you should try to really make sacrifices so that you can homeschool. And I, I get that means most likely having the mom stay at home. And, and I think you should do that if, if, if it is all possible. So, and if that means it's too expensive where you live, you need to move. I think you should live moving, consider moving. I'll, after all, what is more important than the education of your children? The formation of your children as a parent, that's, that's your number one goal. I mean, that's your number one duty, I should say, in life is the formation of your kids. That's one of the purposes of marriage is the procreation and formation of children. And so when we're talking about the educational choices of our children, we really should be willing to make whatever sacrifices are necessary to, to make it happen. And so I really think that, that homeschooling is the best option. One thing I want to leave us with, let, let's, I want to conclude here in a minute. I want to leave with this to remind Catholics that the church teaches that parents are the primary education, educators of their children. Parents are the primary educators of their children. So that means if anybody else is educating them, you are outsourcing your duty to them. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that sometimes, but I'm just saying that recognize it as outsourcing. It, the, the Catholic school you send your kid to isn't the primary educator of your child. You are. You're just outsourcing that to them for a specific uh, task, for a specific maybe subject or a specific period of time or something like that. And so really, that's one of the reasons why homeschooling, it really embraces this idea that that parents are the, the, the primary educators of their children. And I also want to, to remind and, and tell parents this as well. Our modern model of education is broken. It's based upon a 19th century ideal of getting compliant workers in the industrial system. And I think we need to recognize that and leave that. This is not education as it's always been done. Thomas Aquinas wasn't educated like Catholic schools do today. And so what we really need to look at is look at the model itself and say, we need to break that model. We need, we need to teach kids differently. Our kids today, they're forced to sit in classrooms for eight hours a day, and they're given lots and lots of useless information. They're taught to comply, and they're given lots of useless information, information they'll never need. And so we need to escape that system. We need really to say, no, we're not going to educate our kids like everybody else does. We're going to educate them differently. And so during this Catholic school, school, uh, schools week, I really urge Catholic parents, look at how your kids are educated. Consider very strongly homeschooling. Definitely get your kids out of public schools, out of the government schools. Really be critical of the Catholic schools in your area. And don't be willing to accept that, oh, it's just okay because it's Catholic. There's a good chance it's not an okay uh, educational environment. And don't wait too long. So really consider and look into homeschooling your children. Okay, I'm going to end it with that. I think I made my point pretty clear that what, what I think is the best option out of all of them is to homeschool. Uh, but until next time, everybody, God love you. Thank you.